So I guess, and I do hope you have a lot of questions. So we encourage you to submit them at any time using the, the Ask question, a Question widget at the bottom of your console. Please don't be shy. We have done this webinar for you, and uh, we really want to uh, to to get uh, to get uh, uh, interaction at the end. So we have saved uh, approximately 15 minutes to answer as many questions as we can. And uh, finally, before uh, I really begin, I just want to give a quick reminder that customers should base their purchasing decision on products and services that are currently available. With that, let's get started. As you know, we are all together in the middle of an unprecedented crisis. This crisis has a direct impact on public health, but is also causing serious economic consequences across the globe. Wherever you are working or living, Paris, Dubai, London, Cape Town, we have all seen businesses shutting down, while others are trying to ramp up to meet new, unexpected demand. The way we perceive our environments, the way we are working, and of course the way we are engaging with our customers are changing dramatically. We also have seen disruption all across vertical. For example, transportation with airlines, where flights dropped by 90% over a week. Another example, hospitality, where hotel occupancy rates decreased to almost zero. In addition to this decrease in global demand, hospitality is facing as well a massive and an increase in call volumes, so for all cancellation and refunds, and have to do that from home. This is common for all across vertical and all your business that you are in. We are going to share some other examples of Salesforce customers who have been successful by implementing an online strategy. To illustrate this online strategy, I'm going sharing and I'm sharing right now a customer in retail, Nordstrom. It's a luxury department store chain, and I really encourage you to have a look on what they are doing online. All their physical stores were closed overnight, so they shift all of the sales to e-commerce. So clearly, this should resonate also very well to you. Shopping online is a new normal. And what we know is that actually 30% of current shoppers plan to shop more online in the future. And what is good as well is that it's not only for the new generation, it's also for the generation X, boomer, and silent generation. So the one common thing that we have heard from every customer is that the shift to digital, it's more important than ever before. And this needs to happen quickly. So it's what I have seen since January you had run on the roadmap the digital agenda, but this has been absolutely amazing during the first quarter. It's now critical and it's now an imperative. So we are going to focus, to focus today on the shift to digital channels, but as you can see, there is a lot of other topics around this digital customer. So reach out to us if you want more details on other topics relevant to your roadmap. Depends of uh, where you are, I'm working with some of you on stabilizing your business, or how you're going to return to work, or as well, some of you on growing your existing business. As you know, we created the Customer 360, which is a digital first platform to meet all the needs in this new normal. I have some examples to share with you, two, two examples, two additional ones. So the first one is Spadling. Spadling is an American sporting goods company, and they doubled down on e-commerce with Commerce Cloud, and they succeeded to create a personalized customer experience across digital channels. How this is possible? Because a 360 view all across the, all the touch points whatever it is, coming from the marketing, from the sales, and from the commerce. Another example, Volkswagen, they created a central communication platform to deliver timely communication around the COVID-19 
crisis communication related to short-term work and product production schedules. What is important to highlight is that they have done and they, have, they were able to launch it within two weeks' time. This is, as we said, speed to market critical for a lot of my customers and a lot of people decide now to go for out-of-the-box solution instead of in-house or customized solution. What's happening on the scale on the, on the platform within a day or 24 hours? You can see all the numbers. So this was before the COVID crisis. Um, and some of them were during the Cyber Monday. What we know is that all this figure or feature or figure, yes, has been booming. I just check, uh, just to let you know, I checked for the bot, so the bot conversation. And just in April, all the bot con conversation worldwide have been double done compared to what we have done until now. So within a month. You have a lot of questions around the scalability, but uh, I will highlight some of you. So what are the best practices to handle the increased contact volume, especially when you're switching from voice volume to a digital um, uh, request? How do, you, how do we route work to agents, no matter where they are working? You have seen that we need to have the right tools from home. And also how you keep your employees safe and engaged while working remotely. So in this webinar, I'm going to focus and we are going to focus on two parts or three parts. So the first one will be to have the first line of defense, what we call the community or the portal, so the self-service. Then when you are, as a customer, you need to know how to engage on all across channels. So I'm going to focus on digital channel. And finally, between the channel and your company, usually you can implement a bot to scale. And uh, you will see as well how you can have the right tool at the agent level. So uh, our first line of defense, as we mentioned previously, is a self-service or customer community or portals. So we have a lot of use cases. Mm -hmm. It can be a, a portal, but it can be as well an help center or as well a community for your service. A uh, lot of benefits of having uh, uh, this community running on Salesforce, especially on the time to market. Uh, so you can, uh, you can, and you have seen for, for Volkswagen, they have done it in two weeks to just set up a, a brand new um, uh, community to handle all the COVID-19 uh, questions and uh, and uh, and communications. In addition, um, this uh, this community uh, is mo is fully mobile. Uh, you can also as well personalize all the content based on your audience. So it's uh, a dynamic uh, content targeting. So this is quite a very 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 uh, uh, useful, especially if you have if you do customer segmentation and as well if you have a communities based on the different kind of location. It can be in a seat at the city level, but it can be also in the, at the country level. And uh, it's connected. So you can have uh, all the uh, login to your online accounts. You can uh, also link it with uh, your e-commerce platform. And uh, finally, you can as well update information. That, but uh, better than uh, any, uh, any, um, any description, I think it will be better. And uh, I will, uh, we are going to switch now to a, demo, a live demonstration. So I will ask uh, Francis. Francis, please, can you just explain us how you can streamline communication using a self-service community? Thank you. Thanks very much, Arno. Let's now show you how quickly you can pull together a self-service community using the Salesforce platform. What I've done here is I've built an offering out for Capricorn Coffee. I'm a coffee store uh, selling coffee. And obviously during these times, it's been very difficult to, to serve coffee. We've had to close the store, but we've done a number of online things to help us better serve our customers. So what we can do is go in and build a community to serve those customers and make sure they've got the information relevant to what they need to know. For example, we can uh, adapt the layout very quickly, uh, including a tab perhaps for the coronavirus and what we're doing in that space within our business, product support, accounts, etc. The Salesforce community lets you serve up any Salesforce content and allowing your customers to come in and interact with that in the way that there's best, best for them. And you can go in here and um, search for different parts of the business that they want to search for. For example, they can go in, how do I check the status of a order or how do I cancel an order? And these are knowledge articles available both inside and outside the business, uh, which you can serve up to your customers. In a similar way, we can go and say, you know, when are our stores get to be open? 
But I could drill into that, and as a customer, I could drill into that to find out when your particular stores are going to be open. But how do we go ahead and set this up? These are sort of internal knowledge articles and content, but how do we set that up? What I've now slid across to is our community builder. Now, the community builder is a drag and drop, click and uh, deliver type environment where you can go and build the community you want to serve up to your customers in a very simplistic way. Uh, you can not only uh, add components to it by dragging and dropping them onto the screen, we can change the layout here the, of, of what the customer's actually seeing, uh, we can change the style, change the colours and everything that you need to. And we can go and preview this community um, as though we're a customer. So as we start to develop it, we can actually preview it uh, in the same way as our customer would do. So if we go back to those that order um, uh, query we did, how do I uh, check the status of order or how do I order more coffee? I can drill into the articles as though I was the end user. And then I can flip back, back to the builder um, to change the layouts and change the configuration should I need. So I can really build that experience very, very quickly. And what I've done on this particular page is I've built out the ability to have different layouts for different markets or different parts of your business. So I've currently got the Irish market layout. But perhaps for the Dubai market, what we've done is created a slightly different layout, perhaps a three column layout and looking at uh, and laying out the information differently. So this will allow uh, your developers to be able to build a very rapidly build a, a self-service environment and publish that. So we very soon we go ahead and publish that uh, and the changes will be published out and your customers will then be able to gain access to that fresh information, freshly laid out in the way that you want to do that. I hope that's useful and I'll pass you back to Arno at this point. So thank you, Francis. So now that you have seen uh, the, our, our self-service in, uh, in action, let's uh, focus on the, our digital channels and digital enge engagement. Uh, this is all the channel of choice that you're offering to your customer or your, or your partners. So usually we have the chat, so the chat from any application or any uh, uh, portal or customer community. Uh, we have seen the rise, of course, of all messaging. So uh, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, SMS, and also social accounts. So all the communication that you can have from a customer directly from your, the social account of your company. So it can be on Facebook, it can be on Instagram, it can be on Twitter, it can be on YouTube. So everything can be streamlined with uh, the digital engagement skew or solution. And one that has been that one that the customer has been waiting for was of course WhatsApp, and this is available since uh, February. So majority of my customer is now uh, leveraging WhatsApp on the, their channel for support. And uh, as you know, this is one of the most popular messaging app. 2 billion active users worldwide. Um, I wanted to see as well what has been the impact of the coronavirus on the, the total messaging. And uh, 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 with no surprise, everything has been doubled with 50% uh, increase usage from the past last month. Of course, as well, we have a, a raise of uh, the voice and video calling with more than double on Messenger and on WhatsApp. Um, limitation of, as well on, in terms of fake news, because as you know, WhatsApp, we don't have any limitation until now for forwarding messaging. So now they decided to uh, change. This, uh, this has been uh, uh, launched last, uh, last, I think it was last month. So now you can limit to just one shot at a time. Like that, you, 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 you curb the fake news during all the outbreak. Other information that I wanted to share with you, it's uh, the top worldwide, uh, worldwide apps uh, downloaded. And as you can notice as well, WhatsApp is number two. You have uh, other social and communication, so Facebook Messenger and Instagram on the top five uh, application most downloaded. Uh, have a look as well on customer spend uh, and also on monthly active user. So WhatsApp is uh, on the rank number two, but uh, between Facebook and WhatsApp, it's or Facebook Messenger, it's clearly very, very uh, popular, and uh, you really need to have a solution for for this channel. The um, two way to use or to leverage WhatsApp uh, with uh, Salesforce. So the first one is when uh, the customer initiated the communication or the conversation. So 
You can think about uh, WhatsApp in all your support channels, but as well, you can embed it, the, this WhatsApp in uh, your marketing campaign or in your commerce. So meaning that uh, any customer, when they are on this kind of solution, can reach out to you. And since you have uh, the single view of your customer with Salesforce, you know the context. You know the context of why these people are calling you or uh, linked to which uh, sales campaign or which uh, marketing campaign or as well directly on your commerce platform which product they are looking for. The other way to, uh, to, to, to use WhatsApp is with outbound notifications. So there is a limitation with WhatsApp in terms of uh, um, uh, Templates, so you need to have an approved template in order to come back to your customer. So this is uh, this goes through an approval process that I can, of course, uh, help you and work with. It's kind of information in terms of icon update, ticketing update, purchasing update, or it can be as well in terms of uh, a meeting or um, a, a, a rendezvous. Um, so, just to summarize what uh, what uh, what you have seen, so you can of course uh, start on the self service. So, on the self service, you can uh, have on surface all the flow in terms of uh, guided flow and automation. So, some of my customers are using it for um, loyalty card or for credit card. Then you can uh, uh, put a put a bot. So you're going to see later on a bot in action. But this bot can be on a chat. It can be on the SMS. It can be as well on Facebook Messenger and on WhatsApp. So the beauty of Salesforce is that as soon as you have done it for one channel, you can replicate the same rules for the other channels. So in terms of speed to market and uh, and easy to deploy, there is no uh, other solution into the market. Then you can collect all the details of your customer. So all these this, this details, of course, are data. So they go in the CRM. And then you can have any action around this, this data. We have two ways to do it or to leverage the, 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 script, the scripted. So we can have scripted or guided uh, flow. So meaning that everything can be in any languages. So we have some in Arabic, in Russia, uh, but also we have uh, on the natural languages processes. And you can see all the, the, the languages. So just uh, today, eight, but uh, we'll have more and more. And of course, we'll, we'll update you on, the, on, on what's next. Uh, so just to summarize what, uh, what, what, I, what I just told you, so we can, you can deliver a personalized engagement whatever the channel of your customer. We have a lot of competition in each part, but no one is able to have this seamless experience all across the channels. And this can be coming from um, your uh, self-service or any application that you are in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the market. The last thing that I wanted to highlight is that now we launch the channel menu. So the channel menu, it's a little widget where you can have the list of all the channels that the customer can use to reach out to you. So now, Francis, uh, can you please show us uh, how we can scale service with the features we just covered? Thank you. Thanks very much, Arno. Let's now show you how this actually can get deployed onto your website. So here is the same community we saw earlier. You'll see down the bottom right, I've got a little coffee bean, which allow me to access the channel menu so we can go and uh, collaborate and chat with Capricorn Coffee over the, the channel of choice. So some customers like to call, some like to use web chat, uh, SMS, WhatsApp, Facebook, and WeChat. And we can use any one of those, and we will later on see how we'll use web chat to start that communication back with Capricorn Coffee. Let's go and see how we actually set that up. First of all, we're going to drop into Salesforce Setup, and we're going to go and look at the channel uh, menu and look at how we configure that demo channel menu uh, menu that we've just seen. There's a whole load of settings and configurations you can do here, which will really make it very bespoke to the way in which you want to operate. It's very straightforward to put together. First of all, we can go and look at the menu of items that you're going to display. We can display up to six different items. Um, I, as you saw, if you, when we saw the demo, we saw there was a phone, there's chat, there's uh, SMS, uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, and WeChat. So any one of those channels which you could use to drill into the, uh, and uh, deploy that. And we can go and select you know, different configurations, uh, make them available on different operating systems, uh, very, very tailorable and configurable to the way in which your customers uh, might want to work. We can even go in and change the branding so we can change colors. That's how I got that little coffee bean to appear as my, as my icon. Um, 
and we can change the colors and the look and feel of the way it's going to work, fonts and things like that. So it really does fit exactly in with your, your corporate standards of branding uh, that you might want to be able to use. Finally, you can also go in and do language translation. So you can go and select different languages you might want to publish it as, uh, which, piece of, which piece gets translated and which label you want to translate. I've not done any here, uh, but that is where you can then go very, very bespoke to the different deployments that you've got going ahead in a very straightforward way. Once you've done all that configuration, it's quite straightforward to go and collect the, the pre-built code, which can either be, we'll, we'll, as you saw, we can drop onto our own community, or you can also drop it onto any one of your public facing communities, drop in that piece of code. It'll make a call back to Salesforce. You can offer that channel menu directly in context, in place where it should be. So in terms of on the community, just to see how that might be built out, Go back to the community experience builder we saw earlier. Go and select the particular channel component. I've just got a, a search at the top to be able to drag down and pick up the, the right item. Drag it onto the, uh, the layout um, and so we can go in there and then configure the appropriate menu if you remember we were using the demo channel menu to do that. Go ahead and preview it and publish it and it makes it available um, directly here ready for testing and ready for uh, deployment out onto your public website. I hope that was useful and I'll pass you back to Arne. Thanks very much. Thank you, Francis. It was a very po powerful demonstration and you have seen the channel menu in action. So when you have your customer or prospect on your channel menu of a choice, you can know and you're going to see how we can leverage the bots and then how this conversation can be escalated to an agent. To do that, I'm going to use DVLA so DVLA uh, is uh, the driver and vehicle licensing agency in the UK. All the use cases that I'm uh, going to describe, you can find it on their website. So of course, it, all those information are public uh, and there is no uh, confidential details. So DVLA contact center is the largest single site contact center in the UK government. 1,200 agents and they are handling more than 80 million drivers and vehicle records. So that gives you an idea of the, of the volume of call that they are answering. Typically, every month, they answer 1.1 million telephone calls. They have 100,000 chat requests. And as well, they have seen social media used by 3,000 interaction every month. So they had a very clear objective. They wanted to reduce uh, the average handling time and increase the chat uh, handling efficiency. And they wanted, of course, at the end, provide a better customer satisfaction or better service for all the users. Interesting to, uh, to notice, after, uh, after a few, uh, few months, you can, uh, we have, they had uh, two impacts. The first one was on the cost customer side. So they reduced, they succeed to reduce uh, the average on deal time from eight minutes to two minutes 30 seconds. So it's quite impressive. And as well, they succeed to uh, have 25 to 30 percent of customer uh, requests uh, answer without going to any advisor. So I've seen other customers in retail uh, as well reaching uh, this kind of level of performance. So meaning that 30% uh, of all the requests now is managed directly by the bots without any human intervention. You have also a DVLA uh, um, organization. So this has succeeded to, uh, to grow the operational team. And that's quite interesting because uh, I've seen with some of my customers, you wanted to have a, a more customized or in-house solution instead of going to out of the box. Clearly, with a chatbot and with DVLA, they changed completely their mindset. Now they are going for more uh, out of the box solution with Salesforce or with our uh, partner ecosystem on the app exchange. And by doing that, they succeed to, to speed, the, to speed the, 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 the go to market or the, not the go to market, but speed the market or the time to market for any new application or new features. So they increase their focus on AI and automation. Additional metrics that we have seen uh, all across uh, our customers. So call volume, usually you can go up to 50% on average. 
uh, under time 20% on average, but also you can see also how you can increase the efficiency of your drive uh, on the leads and on the sales. Finally, based on the or, or, or feedback and also on the on the consultancy and, and partner, we uh, we are giving you four advice to make so sure that your chatbot will be efficient or your bot will be efficient. The first thing is that you need to be transparent. So don't pretend to be a human. You have to uh, acknowledge the fact that you are you are um, uh, launching a bot and not an agent behind. You need to establish early value. So it's quite easy to have value with uh, Salesforce because you surface all the data and you have all the context of your customer as soon as you know this customer, the, the customer details. You set the expectations, so clearly state the capabilities of the bot and of, of course fail safe, so mean, mean, means, meaning that if, uh, if you need to make sure that uh, you can escalate to an agent if the bot is unable to assist you. If you put in place all this, this uh, guide of principle, you will be very successful. And also start uh, small because uh, you will see uh, uh, it's much easier to start uh, and not, not to over, over engineering or over complicated. Um, just to let you know as well, in the COVID, I've been working with uh, an airline, very famous airline in, uh, in, uh, in UK, and they launched uh, their COVID bot uh, within less than two weeks. Uh, and this has been done with uh, one of the of their uh, um, project manager in, uh, in in this uh, in this airline. I cannot say use a name, but I'm sure you will uh, you can find on the, if you look look at it. Finally, so just to summarize, you you have seen how you can uh, personalize, how you can give the channel of choice of your customer. Then you have the art or the tools that your agent are going to use, so the Lightning Service Console. You are going to see this console later on, but uh, to, be, uh, to be very clear, this also that gives you the power of having a 360 view or single, single source of view of all your customers, and then your employees. Just to highlight and before to go on the demonstration, this is what, uh, what you have at your agent uh, level. So you can customize it as you want. You can have all the information that are important for you in order to personalize your engagement, customer segmentation. You can have also all the, um, the product, uh, product details of what they have been uh, uh, ordered on your commerce platform. You can do the link with the marketing cl uh, cloud, meaning that you can know all the result of all the campaign that you launched, that you have been sent to this customer. You know the sentiment, and you have also all the history and all the background about all the interaction that you have that you have made with this customer. So by saying that, no, I will really want to have the chance for you to see it in action. So Francis, again, thank you. Can you just show us how do you increase agent productivity while decreasing average on their time? Thank you. Thanks very much, Arno. Now let's bring all of that together in a single end-to-end -end demo. And we logged in as a couple of different people just to give an example of how this channel management piece may fit together. First of all, I'm logged in as Francis and I'm looking at the omni-channel supervisor so I can see what the status of all my agents and what they're up to. Two people logged in today, Francis, who's looking after cases, and Tim Service, who's looking after our chat channel. So from here, I'll be able to monitor and manage what's been going on all those channels and make sure we're providing the very best service to our customers. Let's slide across and become Tim Service for a few moments. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have our mobile community. It's a reactive design, so we can deploy that community. We'll have it available both on the desktop and on the browser. And we're going to be Lauren Bailey in that scenario. And on the right hand side with Tim Service, who's logged in, ready to provide service. He's using Omnichannel, where you can see there's a number of different channels he can support, and today he is supporting our chat channel. So Lauren has access to all the same information we saw earlier. This is exactly the same website as we saw earlier, but just delivered through the mobile device rather than through a browser. And we're going to click on our copy bin, click on our channel menu to gain access to the services that we want. And Lauren has a, a number of ways she can communicate. She could make a call, she could do web chat and a number of other ones, SMS, WhatsApp, Facebook, and WeChat. And for today's purpose today, we're just going to use web chat. 
So what's now going to happen is we're going to log in as Lauren, uh, entering her details as we go, and she's going to ask, can I check my order, please? Prior to it being passed to Tim, the agent, we're going to start seeing the Salesforce chatbot kicking in and trying to provide service to, to Lauren as appropriate. And it can offer a menu. This is fully flexible, fully configurable to provide the, the exact service that you're looking for for your customers. It also supports natural language processing. So I'd be able to type uh, rather than orders, perhaps things I want or think, uh, items I've, I'm looking for. And it would be able to narrow down and work out which particular I'm looking for. So first of all, perhaps we go and look at the cases that Lauren has open, and we can see that she's got different cases open about ordering coffee, uh, checking her new order, etc. And she could drill into one of those particular cases and add a comment, close the case, perhaps update her. So all of this providing service to her at, in her own time on her own mobile device without the need to engage the agent. Alternatively, we can go back to the main menu and we can perhaps search the knowledge in the same way as we saw earlier on. Search all knowledge and search for the, the, the store opening details that we were looking for. And you can see how we're going to open the, the store and if you look at that. We can go and do another knowledge search or we can go back to the main menu. A number of different things we could do there. In actual fact, what we now want to do is we want to flip over and move on to chatting, chatting with the agent. So we can just type agent and what that'll do is just check with me before passing me over or Lauren over that I've got all the service. Before we go, is there anything else I can help you with? Um, you know, was the service good? So you can start measuring that. Thanks for your feedback and we can sort of measure that there. The chat's now being passed over to Tim. So Using Omnichannel has been routed to the best available agent to service Lauren's questions. And uh, Lauren's details are popped up here and we bring up Lauren's record. So Tim has in front of him everything he needs to provide the very best customer service uh, should he need it. And he can now start, Tim can now start typing to Lauren, how can I help? And start carrying on that two-way conversation should she need. And on the right hand side, he's got access to all of her details. And if he goes and looks at her actual customer record, he's got access to everything we know about Lauren, including the fact she's uh, due for a loyalty card. So he can move from just solving a problem to offering and increasing the level of service that, that Lauren actually receives. Up in this particular window, we can see all of the things Lauren has been doing. And what that means is we don't need to go back and ask Lauren the same questions that perhaps she's already answered uh, going through um, her, her chatbot. We can also go and transfer our call to another agent. We can collaborate with other people and we can um, even use uh, quick texts, which allow the uh, improve the performance of the, the agent to uh, quickly answer and quickly respond. So. Please, you know, give me some a few moments while I research my information or something, and that can be sent off to uh, Lauren so that uh, Tim can be uh, relieved of the, the, the services where he goes off and does other things. So making making him much more efficient and uh, better working for the for the business. First, we've got access to full Lauren's record. We've got access to sales and service and marketing and everything that we need to know about. So I hope that can give you some insight into how Lauren came on. She could self-serve herself on the left-hand side through our community. She could look up her own information. And then uh, using the chatbot, we'll go on to have a conversation initially with the chatbot. And then finally, she uh, didn't find what she was looking for. She gets transferred to Tim, where Tim can then uh, respond as appropriate, uh, helping her out. The last thing to show is just go back to Tim's homepage, just to bring up Tim's dashboard so you can see how Tim can monitor his own business. And obviously up through the business, we can create dashboards and views to make sure that the rest of the business understands how this part of your service and this part of your business is operating. I hope that's proved useful, going all the way from uh, customer help through the chatbot through to Tim's service, who's providing the assistance. And with that, I'll pass you back to Arne. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Francis. So before to wrap up, I just wanted to spend three minutes on the highlighting some additional use cases. Um, so you have seen the, the frequently asked questions on the communities, but I would like to share with you also the use cases on appointment scheduling and updates. So link between lighting scheduler, field service and bots. You will see as well how you can have information gathering around the commerce platform, uh, leveraging bots. So 
any uh, product information that uh, you you ordered online and uh, you can know uh, you need to update and change for example the delivery address and finally all transactional um, on the service so the bot the bot uh, um, that some of my customer in the banking are using it for uh, all the lost uh, credit card for example thanks a lot automatically answer commonly asked questions using a combination of natural language processing and connected CRM data like existing knowledge articles to get customers what they need and on their way enable customers to schedule and update service appointments as needed Einstein bots pull available times from field service lightning to deliver an automated, hassle-free experience all on the customer's preferred channel. Changes are seamlessly synced back to field service with no agent assistance needed. Give your customers the power to quickly complete routine processes, such as resetting a password, initiating an order refund or return, or reporting a lost or stolen credit card all while being guided through the process by a chatbot that follows your existing business processes. Speed up the resolution of complex issues by having your chatbot collect important information, such as order numbers or account information, for handoff to an agent to streamline the process. These are four ways to quickly scale support across your digital channels. What's more, you build your Einstein bot once and then deploy it across both existing and new digital channels. That's just some of the potential your business can see with chatbots. Finally, uh, you can use uh, as well Salesforce Care solution as I mentioned uh, uh, during the introduction. It's a way for, of, of helping you stay connected with your communities and customers. So when you sign up, you, you get access to a pre-configured Salesforce org, which is your company's hub for responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, we're inviting you as well to play with our bot, Blaze, that you will find on our, will find on our customer support. You have the address over there. Uh, help.salesforce.com and uh, you will see uh, it's, uh, you, have a lot of, you can have a lot of interaction with it. Thanks so much, Francis, for walking us through those amazing demonstrations and showing everyone how they can take advantage of uh, the Salesforce platform during this challenging time. Before we begin responding to questions, I first want to remind everyone that you can continue to submit uh, your questions using the Ask a Question widget. We also want to make sure that our webinars offer is valuable in terms of content and also meet your expectation. So please take a moment to write this session using the survey widget, which you will see um, at the bottom of the console. So um, here's our first question. Uh, Francis, um, you shared uh, during the demonstration a lot of channels. Uh, so the question is, uh, how many different channels can be supported within uh, Salesforce? Uh, th thanks very much, Anna. Yes, so the distinct channels today, uh, we can support uh, up to 2,000 distinct channels, you know, WhatsApp, fa Facebook, Messenger, WeChat, etc. Um, and there will also be, you know, obviously in, in the roadmap, um, future channels that we will be able to support. Obviously, that's covered under our safe harbor statement. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one. Uh, in terms of WhatsApp, uh, so WhatsApp business accounts, um, how many uh, phone numbers can be supported under one generic WhatsApp uh, business account for, at the company level? So uh, I, I believe you can support up to uh, 250 different WhatsApp numbers. So what you could do there, for example, is you could have uh, a WhatsApp for service, a WhatsApp for accounts, uh, for the different channels across your business, perhaps different territories, uh, so you can segment out. And then you can use Omni routing and, and all the, the capability you saw me there with Tim's service to be able to route those conversations to the right people in the business to be able to manage them. 
Okay, thank you, Francis. I have another one in terms of the bot. So, as you know, we have a customer all across uh, EMR, so languages is a big challenge. Uh, so, the question is that um, uh, how many languages are available using Einstein bots? So uh, there's a couple of answers to that. Today, natural language processing is English only, but we've got other ones in Pilot, uh, and we can let you have the full list of those. Um, so those are things like French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, etc. But we're also yeah. looking to be able to bring your own natural language processing to that um, with uh, allowing you to integrate into other chat, uh, sorry, other uh, natural language processing engines. Uh, okay. Do you know if there is uh, some uh, um, bots in Arabic running in the region? Uh, I believe, yes, there are bots that are running in Arabic. We're using the sort of menu-driven approach today. Uh, you saw in my demo when Lauren was offered the different uh, items on the menu, you can build out that, those types of bots without natural language processing, so sort of tree-structured type approach. And we have customers okay, so using that in multiple languages. Okay, so same question from uh, also on the on Arabic. So, Unchained Bot and WhatsApp Bot supported in multilingual lingual, uh, Arabic supported. Yeah. So, the answer is yes. Uh, so, questions. Uh, is it uh, mandatory to have a business account number for WhatsApp channel? Uh, to the, the, the answer. Yes. You're gone. No, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. So if you, if you want to use WhatsApp, you need a business account. There's great descriptions in the um, help documentation of Salesforce. So go and look up how to set up WhatsApp, and it leads you through the different steps uh, that you need to go through to uh, get the number assigned and then get it connected to Salesforce. Fairly straightforward process, but it's not something that can happen instantly. It does take a day or two, There's a, um, mainly for the uh, WhatsApp process to work its way through. Okay, other question on the FAQ setup. So can we have a FAQ setup on the bot and train the bot if any questions are not answered? So you, you can do a, a degree of training, absolutely. So you can, you can watch what questions get asked, like, for example, um, where, go back to, to Lauren and her coffee, where's my order, how can I change my order, things like that. And you could train the bot to understand and lo learn those utterances, as we call them, and then drive that to the right dialogue within the bot. The classic one is change my password, reset my password, I can't log in, I've forgotten my password, all lead you to the, the, the chatbot conversation to sort of go through the reset process. So absolutely, you can uh, set out some standard messaging and then teach it to uh, uh, watch it to learn new phrases and then go back as an iterative process. And just as a point of contact, we can do the same with our knowledge articles, where uh, you know, if I'm searching for those knowledge, I can't reset my password, I can't log in. You can watch for those searches. You can see which searches didn't produce any knowledge documents, which led them going through to your agent. And you could then uh, set those knowledge articles up, thus uh, enabling you to deflect stuff coming into your call center long term. Okay, thank you. We have a question as well from Hatim, from our friend Dinata Emirates. So how could we, can we expedite the NLP training of the bots? And is there any library for travel industry? Um, I would need to come back to on that. I think there are some libraries that are out, but I'm not specific. I don't know about specific about the travel industry. Um, I would need to uh, do a little bit of investigation. What we'll do here from this, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you on that one. All right, we have a question as well from Sarah on the translation function. So how does the translation function work and how accurate are the translations? So not quite certain what the question is there. The translation, so when we're talking about natural language processing, you obviously be able to converse in the particular language that we, we were talking about. That's very straightforward. In terms of the translation, when you saw me setting up the menu, that's a, a manual thing. So you can do your own translation from you know, how to order coffee into a local language, and you could do that so the channel menu gets translated. Um, I, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, we'll come back to you uh, if, uh, if you need uh, more details. I'll come back to us if you need more details. Uh, Karin, 
uh, is a bad feature or part of Salesforce Einstein or need to be procured separately so that I can take it. So the bots are part of uh, Service Cloud UE and Limited Edition. If you're not on UE, you need to, to procure it separately and this is covered by digital engagement SKU or if you just want a bot on the chat on the conversation that we can have. Uh, so to summarize, UE included, digital engagement included as well, but if you want to have um, the bot on all the channels and the chat, like WhatsApp, Facebook, you need to have the digital engagement as well. All the questions. Um, so my friend Elias uh, from EKK in Bahrain. So uh, does bot, do, does bot uh, pick up data from objects or only from knowledge? Oh, I think this is a really good question, actually, and thanks for asking it. Um, what we can do within the bot is we can pull and search data, not only from any Salesforce objects so in the normal sort of way, um, but also from external. So, for example, if Lauren wanted to go and say, what is my outstanding invoice or how much do I owe you, those types of questions that perhaps are stored on your ERP solution. So not only do we, we search all of the Salesforce objects for information and uh, a data to display back to, to Lauren, we could also then go off to your ERP solution to say that you know, Lauren's got a $10, $10 £10, ten euro credit outstanding to her. So you could um, link those systems within the bot, so accessing any data that's got a sort of open API that you can collaborate and communicate with. That's a really good question. Thank you, uh, Francis. So I guess we don't have no, we don't have any more questions. So uh, as you, as we as I just uh, mentioned, uh, you can. So we are going to send you the, the webinar, the link. Uh, we are available, of course, if you want to engage with us. Uh, we'd like to thank you again to each of you for taking the time out of your day, and of course, um, I will uh, I wish you a very good day. So thanks a lot. Cheers.